Round one. What's good here? Uh, obviously, Prince is good versus everything, and then, and then the good cards are Captain. The Firefly is good one drop. Mm, it's kind of all about the curve. So Captain is bringing the patches. So I kind of like keeping these two. The Corridor Creeper is also a very solid card to keep. So yeah, if you are curious which lineup is playing, uh, Zala is playing Jason Job lineup, and this is exactly the match you will see tomorrow on HCT for top 8, so it's gonna be pretty pretty high stake match, yeah. So now we get a Gorkara Creeper, that's sweet. Here we just dagger. We have a free drop, so there's no reason to attack. Like you attack in case you kinda scared that you need to re-dagger, so... So it's not the case here. Like if I would have no free drop, I would probably attack. Because damage, damage kinda matters, yeah. Okay, so Zala is taking it slow, like he had a decision probably, we could let's say coin out the captain or he could... He could maybe coin out SI. Um, the way how I like approaching this matchup is to keep the captain with the patches to kill something and just develop a talent to deny him the, the dagger, so... Just develop the tower creeper. Yeah, I'm risking that I will draw the patches, then I will be really sad, but... Against the other, in the other options, um, the Tower Creeper will be do, doing great job of in terms of turning the Wicked Knife down. Yeah. Okay, so there's Tower Creeper from my opponent as well. So here, there's the backstep, and we what we can do is to play the Captain, use the backstep, and kill it with the minions, like with the patches. Backstep and Dagger and del del Delver Two-Face. The bad thing is we don't have a combo for Slayer unless we will have three Tower Creeper next turn. So how many minions will die actually? Two? So this is gonna be five. He's gonna kill like something, but I don't think this will be f uh, for free completely. So what we can actually do is to uh, save the Backstep and next turn we can go Backstep Slayer. So that's what we will do. And we just pass, right? Okay, there's a Firefly. There's a Captain. He has a Patches in hand, that sucks for him. So here we can backstep here, Slayer. Then we kill this with Dagger. Value trade and go face with the remaining cards, right? Hey, this, is, this matchup is a lot about tempo. We also have the Corridor Creeper, so now I think we are in commanding spot. Like, especially if we push a lot of damage, the Leroy can finish him off quite easily. Okay, that was weak. So what can we do? We can Shwish Buggler, trade the Corridor Creeper away. We don't have Lethal, unfortunately. We're quite missing. Uh, but yeah, we can live with that, I guess. Oh, this could be juicy. So can we trade enough minions? I just guess we just go with the Courier Creeper. I don't think he will be pleased, so we can do this, right? So yeah, easy one zero. Like, yeah, this game was not close because I like, drew the patches. I had very decent curve, like with the Firefly, Tower Creeper. And also the crucial moment was when I kept the backstep and set up the combo with the Slayer turn five and then I get insanely ahead. But the, the main reason was that the Zale drew a little bit poorly, yeah. Round two. So we are playing Druid versus Priest, and 
the priest from Jason Jaw doesn't contain the dragon package, so I would say it's still slight favorite, but if he would run all the dragons, it would be even worse, so I definitely have a chance. The question is, do I want to keep the living mana? So how can priest handle the living mana? If you check the Jason Jaw deck list, which is here, he has standard psychic, scream dragon fire, and then he has how can I circle and wild pyromancer. He doesn't run horror. So it might be that the living mana could be worth keeping. Like if especially if you are second, it's more more promising. But I think even more important is to go with early curve and the buffs. So I just mulligan the living mana away, but um I can see some point if someone is keeping living mana if he's second versus priest, yeah. Jason Joe doesn't run Crawler, so it means I probably want to clean out the Captain, turn 2, because it cannot be met by the Crawler, so it means that I don't develop two minions here. So now it's between Firefly and Mole, like uh, if he used the Pain, it would be better to just develop Firefly, but if, with the Captain in hand, I'm actually pretty pretty happy if he will use the Pain, and against Loot Hoarder, or against Novice Engineer, or against Elemental, it's much better to develop the moles, so yeah. But I want to uh, I want to clean out the captain next turn, yeah, because there's no crawler. If there would be craw crawler in Jason Jaw deck or in Talis deck now, it could be a different story, and I could just develop two minions and ne next turn play another minion and Marco Flodus. So here we go with the captain, right? And as a druid, you need to be as aggressive as you can. So next time we probably just develop double Farfly and Mark Flotus because you just want to put as much as you can on the board, yeah? If he has How Can I Circle, we just lose. Like, if you get another buff, that would be amazing, yeah, but... Okay, Potion of Madness. So the other option would be to play the Swarm and Firefly, but I think plus four, plus four is more than enough, yeah? And we need to be aggressive as much as we can. So now cross your fingers for no, no how can I circle. It's two card combo yeah, and there's only one copy of each. So it's not that likely. Yeah? And I wanna, you know, push as much as I can. And there's Kazakus. Now it's all about whether he's gonna play for a AOE or not. If we get a Savage Roar, we have 20 damage, right? What's he looking for? Four AOE for sure and then he's looking kinda whatever. It could be five, five, it could be two cards. It could be heal 7, for example. And like how I will approach, I will probably just go all in and hope he will not find for AoE. Like if I will get a buff, I, I will be super happy, obviously. Yeah? Okay. So if he has 4 AoE, this will survive, so that's why I play the Taunt. What I could consider is value trade here. Because if he has 4 AoE, this will survive, so I will have actually an extra minion for free face damage. So I could have 2 2 minion or free face damage in his face. So like the 2 2 minion will connect directly next turn. And it, he may not have, let's say, Dragonfire Potion turn 6, so it's probably worth it to value trade him. Yeah? So now 4 AoE probably is coming down. And then he will probably need to dragon fire potion, yeah. As you can see, these smorg decks are quite difficult to play perfectly, and it's kind of rewarding. Very often, it means it makes the difference between losing or winning. And but but on the other hand, very often games are decided whether they just found the Kazaku's potion like the right one. But yeah, there are still a lot of nuances, and I feel. The, the deck is still much much more skill intensive than let's say the warlock versus the priest where it's all about Raza and doing yeah? Okay, Town of Spirit Lash. So now we have 13 phase damage. The question is can we have ambitious to beat the dragon fire potion? Like, if he goes Dragonfire Potion, we can just develop everything. Like, if he doesn't have Dragonfire, do we win always if we don't develop anything? Maybe not. It could be that he just used something like Shadow War Death, kill this guy, 
And then we have no lethal and then he can use Psychic Scream. So I want to develop something. So I just develop Cordial Creeper. Maybe it's too aggressive and just conceding to, to Dragonfire. But he still has Kazaku's Potion and he could have like 5 damage, 2 cards. And against that I would like to have lethal, yeah. And if he goes Dragonfire, I just lose unless I top deck living man I am. But it's probably better to just beat something like Kazaku's Potion because I knew he has it. So this extra 5-5 five, five could be really crucial. Okay, so there's greater healing. So now Savage Roar one time. Okay, so if we go Psychic Scream. Now we beat the Dragon Fire, that's good. Now we have actually little. So, um, yeah, like, uh, for example, now, like, the Corridor Creeper was really important. We, we had him. Because let's say he would have Psychic Scream. If he wouldn't have Creeper on the board, we could lose. Round three. Zala is definitely a favorite because he has more card draw. And I have the Dragon Package, which is not that great. While on the other hand, he used to have Operative. And still all about who draw. Raza and win first. So you can just get lucky and get it. Uh, so now let's check the, the Jason Joe deck list. Because like, it, now you should make a decision whether you ban the... Uh, whether you should keep the 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 Drake, and he runs Silence, and he runs Must Dispel. So these are two amazing answers to that. But on the other hand, every dragon is kind of valuable with Historian, so you can just cross your fingers he doesn't have Silence because then the Drake is causing a lot of damage. Okay, there's Undoing. That's good. Now we start with the Cleric. So now we have a decision whether we want to go with Pyromancer or not. We are threatening with the trade. Like, if he has the shield, it could be annoying. Because then he will draw one extra. Also, the Drake will be smaller. I can just clear with Horror, probably turn 4. I am never sure, like, when when is the situation you develop the Cleric and when it's not. But probably you don't develop it unless you have shield, so... Then the Pyro doesn't make much sense, so I just pass. He could also go like Tower Creeper and trade it next turn and heal it, so... Like, if I wouldn't have Horror, it would be probably a different story, but... So there's Psychic Scream. Sometimes the Psychic Scream is good to shuffle all the junky minions. And, you know... Make it harder for your opponent to get a Raza Undoing combo. Oh, you get a donation. Thanks, thanks man. You're gonna get rich. Okay, so we now just use the horror, I guess. Because horror is kind of junky card, yeah. Okay, Glimmer Root. So I guess he will guess correctly because he can find the deck lists <laughs> publicly, so. So I guess here we just kill the cleric. Because it's all about the card draw. So now the question is, do we want to use our last dragon from hand to get on a board? Probably not. Because if we get Operative or Historian, we just want to have access and um, access to get advantage of that. So we just chill. Okay, so now we dodged the Mass Dispel successfully. So I guess it might be the time to develop the drag. Okay, there's the Geist. I guess I like the... Drake more or don't I? Like the guys is probably okay. Like the four six is also good. Are good numbers, and we didn't lose anything. We utilize the mana. Yeah, that's fine. So he used Dragon Fire Potion, which is kind of dead card for him. So now the question is, do we develop the Drake? Because we could keep attacking with it. But on the other hand, like there are not that many dragons like in the deck. There is Skelban, Operative, Primordial, Dustbreaker, and Historian. So like the dragon in a hand is kinda crucial stuff, so I just keep it, yeah. So next time we'll probably just switch to undoing because you know it's the ace in our packet, so like in this matchup, the board clear is not doing anything, so it's all about start shooting, yeah. There's Kazakus. I 
And there was Kazaku, so I guess he picked some card draw if he could. And now we just switch to Undoing, right? We're utilizing the mana the best possible way. We need to switch eventually, so... That's fine. Like, we still have Psychic Scream if he goes on the board strongly, so it's fine. We switch to Froden, so everything is fine. He didn't have even half of the combo, so okay, there's his Froden. Now we play Kazakus. Okay, there's the Velen. So we can get 5 mana potion, but the issue is... We... Cannot just draw 2 because we would overdraw. So we could ping here, Kazakus and ping. Yeah, it's probably better. Okay, two friendly minions. What it does, actually. Clo like, close to nothing. Like, guys died. I developed some board, but... I can always engineer died. So, five damage is probably better. Ah, that sucks. No card draw. So I guess we need to get Raza. Like now the whole game is all about who gets Raza first. That's why I think the matchup is a little bit stupid here. Yeah? And this is 12 swing, so it's kinda okay. Okay, I guess now it's time for Psychic Scream, maybe. Because the Kazakus should not work, right? Or will it? It will, actually. So he also runs Greater Healing Potion, so... It might be kind of nonsense to shoot like crazy. Maybe you should just focus on on getting on getting the Raza somehow. Yeah, but like, it's all about Raza, yeah, and like, I, like he's deeper in, fr through his deck, so it's not looking great. He will keep shooting him, but... So I guess now the Psychic Scream should be the play. The question is if we don't want to shuffle him Pyromancer as well or not, how crucial it is. Or is it more crucial to ping him for two? Probably this, yeah. We are still hoping the game will be quite long, yeah. So if we will have uh, Raza, we have 24 damage, right, with this. But whenever we get Raza, we basically can shoot him over time. So yeah, it's all about who gets Raza first, yeah. It's kind of funny that we didn't get any dragon the whole game, yeah. Okay, there's Priest of the Feast. So now he's healing. So I want to kill this for sure. Okay, there's the Historian. And I will play the Historian because I want to play Operative next turn and Raza, hopefully. So that's what's good about Operative, yeah. Or about the Dragon Package. If we, you both are unlucky and the good cards are remaining somewhere in the deck, then the operative is really OP because you can discover the Raza and if I get it, I should win. And the good thing is that we can operative and then immediately level Raza and shoot him and have a little. So there's a question, where are you from, Stan? I'm from Czech Republic, Europe, so, so that's my home uh, and Prague is my hometown, so yeah. That's my description. Okay, so now cross your fingers for Raza. That sucks. Game continues. That's funny. So I guess now the Psychic Scream is coming down. Oh, must be nice. So what do we have? Just Dragonfire Potion, right? But we get a card from Lyra. So Velen, Elemental, and Mind Blast. Easy peasy. What a nice meta we have. He also needs the Silence, but 
guess it's out there. Okay, or Kazakus Potion, yeah. Round four. So the question is, should we keep the silence or should we keep the shadow or death? Like, um, he runs double Hydra, so I keep the shadow or death because the Hydra is pretty scary. The question is about the silence, yeah. I don't think silence is like if you are second, then it's much closer, yeah, though. Because like, let's say if he plays the captain and buff something, then it's pretty pretty strong, yeah. Like I keep the death for sure against Hydra. There are some very bad cards like Vel and Geist or even Anduin is super slow. So it could be that you can just keep these. The Shadow Vision is kind of questionable though. Like it does break with Dragon is insta win, I feel, but yeah. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, there's Hungry Crab. Okay, there's Mind Blast. That's not the card we needed. Now we can set up some some pyro combo, right? But maybe we can just yeah, if we play the silence next turn, we get two two extra, but we heal free with priest of the feast, so it's probably okay. And we can eventually buff it again. Oh, Horan check just subscribed and joined the dark side. Welcome, welcome. Happy that you are here. Okay, so what can we do here? can coin out the Priest of the Feast and Silence. If he goes Savage Row, we take 18. So we hit 8. It's kind of okay. The other option is to deal 2 AoE and clear these, but it's probably not worth it, yeah? Like the 3-6 free, free is kind of strong on the board, yeah? So, like, next turn we should survive till Kazakus, and hopefully the Kazakus should carry. I can trade these two in. He probably should. So we are now at 22. So we take 20. It's one off if he goes. If he goes Savage Roar. If Savage Roar puts us at one, it, is it okay? It's probably okay. Yeah, we can get AOE plus armor. And he, there's nowhere written he has the Savage Roar. This is bringing the Priest of the Feast back. And the, the Kazakus. But there's four. Where's the four AoE? I'm kind of missing that one. We'll trade here. And there will be Hydra, for example. Seven armor is kind of okay. But Freeze 2 might be even stronger because against Savage Roar and also against dodging the Trading Priest of the Feast. So yeah. That was not good potion. Yeah, you can recognize it yourself, I guess. So it's one off unless he has under buff. That was not a bad draw, yeah. Oh, under the savage draw is lethal, yeah. So what now? He can value trade here. Like if he goes Hydra, I probably just play Shadow or Death. Like Living Man, I can handle with this. So it's fine. <sighs> okay, so. Never open cleric was good. Like if I survive, like the late game is mine. So what can we do? We can kind of clear. We can do this and hope we will freeze the Hydra. So then we have 60-60% to freeze the Hydra. If we do, we will remain with Priest of the Feast on the board. The question is, don't we have even higher EV? Shadow or Death here. Value threat and heal face. Or if we Pyra. Do this. Okay, we have one health here, one health here. I can trade and beat us with living mana. So I don't want to develop the pyro for sure. But we can do this, right? Now we beat the buff. We don't beat the savage roar, but we beat the living mana, I guess. Like we don't beat the second hydra. Like maybe we will. Like if we get lucky and freeze it. Yeah. For example, this matchup is very tough, yeah, and very skill intensive. And that's glad that it's around in the heart zone. Like, I just feel the Warlock versus Priest sucks and pre Priest Mirror sucks. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I feel the Priest is quite skill intensive deck. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now we spin the wheel. So 
now we are dead to buff, like it was a little bit unlucky, but yeah, what can you do? Now if we survive, we should be kind of fine. Okay, Corridor Creeper, Crawler, Maul and killing the Cleric, I guess. So how much do we heal? Nine. We can deal two AoE, three AoE, we deal three AoE. Yeah, I misplayed this turn, but sometimes it's better to do something badly than perfect play and to just rope away. What? What? My god, the NA delay. Yeah, if I would play Spirit Clash, I would be... Yeah, I'm not too used to play play on NA server, it's, it's like one second delay. Okay, okay, but at least you will see one more match, yeah? Like, uh, if I would play the the Spirit Lash, um, and then I will trade the Corridor Creeper, his board would be gone, and I would heal, but on the other hand, he still had a chance to top deck the Living Mana, so... Final round! Yeah, I guess the Acolyte is pretty good versus Rogue, like, I like all of these actually, yeah. So, 2-2 two, two we are. So it's good, we have Silence. It's actually pretty juicy because he cannot value trade the Ecolite, so I will get a card back immediately. Okay, so... So there's Cleric, and the good thing is we draw two with Ecolite, and we also kill the minion with that, so... And he has a... He has a Shadow set, but no, we top deck the death. That's sweet. Right from the top, sign me in. Okay, there's a Chain Gank. The Duskbreaker would be so juicy. Give me the Dragon! Okay, that sucks. My god, jeez. What have I done? So, two demons are so much worse than two cards. Yeah, that's so clear. Like, the 5-5 five, five would be nice, or two cards would be nice. Like, at least I got four AoE. So now we can play Dragonfire or Kazakus. Or the Dusk Breaker. So with the Dusk Breaker we have a 3-3 free free and he heal 2. With the Kazaku's Potion we get a 2 Demons. With Dragonfire we use the Worst Resource. But the 3-3 free free is probably in the board so much better. I also heal in. There's Firefly and Slayer. So now we grab some value. Oh, we get a Void Lord, that's sweet. And another Temporus. And I probably don't even want second operative. It's too much value. So Alexstrasza could be good heal eventually. Or maybe, I guess Alexstrasza are good. Probably not, right? So what do we do next turn? We go Scalebane and Minion. We probably play operative. Maybe we want to play operative next, uh, next turn in the future. The Void Lord actually could be pretty juicy. And the good thing is that uh, Zale has no Spellbreaker in the deck, so... The Void Lord will be pretty nice. So the only thing I have to afraid is the the Scalebane Snowball, but he runs only one, so... That also should be quite okay. So there's Leroy. Is it Shadow Step? Next turn he can go Leroy plus... Plus what actually? Probably plus nothing. What do we do? We can just heal if we want really badly. How can he kill me with form 21? He can't, right? So yeah, we just play operative and heal. It's also dragon, right? 
pretty sweet. So we can play Dragon Fire and heal. Next turn we can go greater healing and slayer. Unless we have in case unless we have a lethal somehow. If we go mind blast. Slayer, we don't have lethal, okay, never mind. So yeah, this is GG. No matter what, so we can just mind blast slayer. Spirit lash, maybe. We could Slayer Trade Spirit Clash. Yeah, it probably works for me. Yeah, Scalebane too light. Hi guys, thanks for watching. It makes me real happy that you always go to my channel and check out my daily videos. I'm so proud about the community we made and I hope you'll enjoy the videos in the future as well. So if you forget, just hit the subscribe button and see you tomorrow. Bye bye.